All right, hi guys, it's Miss Sarah from the West Bank Club and I have got Dr. Mary with me today and we're gonna do a little career day interview with her and I've got a couple of questions pulled up, so let's get this started. So first up, Dr. Mary, what is your career and briefly explain what you do. So I am a pharmacist by uh, education and license but I am unique in that I work at a veterinary hospital slash school of veterinary medicine. So I um, basically oversee all the drugs and medications that our animals need in the hospital and going home. So that's pretty much all different sizes. Okay, awesome. So since you're a pharmacist and what were your favorite subjects growing up, like in elementary, middle school, high school, what were your favorite things to study back then? Well, for the longest time, I wanted to be an astronaut. So I loved, loved, loved science. Um, and then even when I decided not to be an astronaut, I still loved science. And I loved math. Um, and pretty much those two, um, I liked art and other things, but math and science were like my strong suits. That's what I liked the most. And sometimes it was a struggle, but I liked the challenge of that. I was very determined. So. so when you got out of high school, how did you decide to pick pharmacy? So I um, am very unique in that I never, I had a good friend, uh, a friend's dad introduced me to pharmacy when I was in high school. And that got me very interested in it. And he showed me something that we call compounding pharmacy, which is really cool in that you make, um, you basically turn one form of medicine into a different form. So take like a pill and turn it into a suspension for an animal or flavor it um, for humans or animals. And he told me about um, how this was very popular. I loved compounding because it's kind of like baking and cooking with drugs. And um, I thought it was really cool. And he told me that it's very popular with veterinarians because animals can't always take the medicine that we have or the sizes are different. And so from that point, I was like, I really want to do veterinary, veterinary pharmacy in some way. Um, and so I went into school, into college, knowing I wanted to be a pharmacist. And then eventually at some point, um, I had other interests, but at some point wanted to work um, making medications for animals specifically. So what kind of school do you have to complete to become a pharmacist and also a vet pharmacist? So to become a pharmacist, um, usually you have, it's just like trying to get into like dental or medical school. Um, you have to have a bachelor's degree and then you can apply for pharmacy school and pharmacy school is four years. Um, and then you come out as a doctor of pharmacy and you can pretty much for my job, there's really not that much um, educational opportunities after that. Um, uh, there is a residency, a one year residency you can do. Um, we have rotation and some schools have electives on veterinary pharmacy, but veterinary pharmacy is definitely not something that's regularly taught in school. It's very, very unique in that point. So sometimes it's a after you graduate type of learning experience. So, okay. So, you, and I know, so as others might not know, we've been friends for a while. So I know you had to move around um, to follow your vet pharmacy things. Is that something that's typical if you want to specialize in pharmacy? Um, in, in vet pharmacy? Mm -hmm. I would I would say yes. Um, if you're really passionate about this, you um, are going to be willing to go to um, unique places. Um, it's not really something to do my job. Um, there's a version of me at every veterinary school in the country, and those aren't always in popular, like very big cities, um, because they're teaching agriculture. So like we have cows and sheep. So usually it's in like maybe a little more rural area. Um, my friend Andrea is the pharmacist at LSU though, so there is one of us at, in Baton Rouge. Um, but yeah, so you, if you really want to do this and you're really dedicated, you um, would have to move, be willing to move. And I moved, I went all the way to Starkville, Mississippi, 
which was unique for me to go work at Mississippi State. And now I'm in New England. But I had a friend that was from Pennsylvania. She moved all the way to California for a little bit. Or really, she moved to Indiana first, then California. Now she's finally at the University of Illinois. So she's in Illinois now. So I've had friends that moved all over the place um, to do what to do what we like do this. <laughs> um, so how is what you studied in school apply to what you're doing now or not apply to what you're doing now? Um, part of it is in part, obviously the biggest part that I didn't learn in school is all of the medications for animals and the doses for those animals. So um, how much they each get. Um, but I learned a lot about more, I mean, um, just how drugs work. Um, it's a, it applies here, um, how to read what antibiotics would be good for different infections would be good. Um, so I can help veterinarians in that way because um, they rely on specialists for that information, like special veterinarians. And when they're not around, I actually have the same background um, that, or I have the same knowledge really, and that um, they can always cons consult me to help them with that. So I would say like, it's 50-50. I mean, the biggest, hardest part was the fact that like, I've never, was never taught any amount, of anything about drugs and animals really. Um, so that was a lot of on the job learning. So my next question would be, what do you wish you had learned at school? But it sounds like you already answered that yeah. a lot of the specific to animal information that you've learned since you graduated with your doctorate in pharmacy. Yeah, I mean, I really do wish that I had like at least um, a small overview of animals um, because animals are all they're all kind of very different and there's little things about them that make certain drugs appropriate for them and so like for instance like I wish I had known that a horse's intestines are like up and down like you know and why do they get sick all the time things like that um, you know just like a quick overview on that um, would have been really helpful but it was definitely something that I had to learn on my own um, to be like, why are we always, why are horses always coming in with stomach aches? And it's like, oh, well, because their, some, their intestines is up and down. <laughs> so. so how long have you been working in your current career? So I've been doing this for five years um, and I will, I actually qualify, I just qualified to do board certification um, this year. So very excited about that. Um, but I have colleagues that have been doing this for 30 plus years and have paved the way for the rest of us to do this. So um, I've been working with animals longer than I did with humans. What is board certification? Board certification means kind of like you're recognized on an international level. Um, it's really big in hospitals and um, universities. And so you're kind of recognized by your colleagues um, that you are an expert in your field. Do you have to take a test or anything for it or? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So there's gonna, I, I, this year I'll have to take five tests. That's a lot of tests. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when you first started this, what's been the most unexpected part of your career? Oh my being goodness. Being a pharmacist. <laughs> I, have, I have so many. One, well, one like serious, I have like crazy unexpected and then I have one that I really didn't realize that I tell my pharmacy students is that, um, so veterinarians have to learn so much and veterinarians are the doctor and then they also like in a clinic, they're like their own pharmacist too. And I get that, and they have to learn all these different species. And um, so I was not, I was really surprised when um, I became the person that tells them the law, like what they can and cannot do without breaking the law in terms of drugs. Um, which is fine because they already have to learn so much on their own. I don't blame them for not knowing those things. So I didn't realize I was going to be the real like legal guru on that. Um, but the crazy unexpected has always been the, um, the exotics. So getting a tiger. Um, when I had a baby giraffe, I had two crazy ones last week. 
of um, we had a uh, a rabbit a rabbit needed a drug nebulized like a like a, a asthma patients have a nebulizer um, and my other pharmacist who has been doing human hospital pharmacy for 30 years was like how does a rabbit get its drug nebulized you just put the mask to their face and their nose goes like this and I was like, I don't know. And then we talked to the doctors and they were like, yeah, that's, that's exactly what you do. So, <laughs> so I, um, it's like those little things that um, is like really unexpected. It was just like having um, the exotics is really what throws me off. And it's really, really fun though, because it makes for great stories later. It does. I've heard a few. Um, so what would be the hardest part of being a vet pharmacist? Um, especially kind of sounds like kind of early on in your career with this um specialty yeah um i would say well it, uh, the hardest and i think i've like put that together um more recently with the pandemic and stuff is that um i was educated to help humans like first and foremost so um i think the hard part is to remember my place in helping humans and that when um, especially here in Massachusetts when they did need a need for healthcare practitioners and professionals that I wasn't necessarily there to help them and I kind of felt like geez like this is what I was taught to do um, and you have that instinct um, but you have to realize that you are helping humans in another way and that the human animal bond like is a very um, important thing and that and that's even hard on the on its own when sometimes I do get clients who call and they have just lost that bond is so working with that bond is is very hard um, in a great way and also in an emotional way um, and when they have lost an animal and having to work with them is is tough but like I would say all of a sudden I felt like I wasn't helpful um, and um, but you have to re-remind yourself that you are helping humans, but in a very different way than you see on the news. So um, that's, that's, that's the hard part, I think. And, and sometimes when you have your friends from school who are like, well, I'm, you know, in the ICU. And you're like, well, I also have ICU. But you're not keeping humans alive. You're keeping their pets alive. So I think that's really important, especially yeah. when everybody's spending a lot more time at home. Yeah. Their pets are very much a part of their family. Yes. And that's what we saw a lot with COVID and everyone having to stay home was that like these animals are very important to them. They're keeping them happy. They're, they're a huge part of their, their life. And um, that's what kept me going pretty yeah. much. So kind of, I guess, the opposite side of that, what's the best part of the career job? Um, I think I have two. I have one is like educating. Um, so I educate pharmacy students. Um, I um, educate new doctor, new veterinarians, and soon to be veterinarians. And I love that part of my job. Um, and then also um, probably that the six our success cases, like when I have especially if I get called in for very complicated cases and they walk out of our hospital um, after they've been on a ventilator or really, really sick and something, somehow I really contributed that um, is sometimes my favorite. Like one time I, I can say I definitely helped save like a tortoise because I made compounding again. I made a antibiotic, like a gel infused with a antibiotic in it and this tortoise ended up healing which the owner didn't expect we just thought we were going to kind of like keep it alive for a little longer and actually their infection went away and it's a happy little tortoise down in louisiana actually <laughs> so, so we might run um, into this happy little tortoise yeah well. so um yeah those are like that's really my that's always in when we, you know we get to see little baby foals go home and things that's always very exciting What's, what would you say would be the, I don't want to use the word like craziest, but kind of most unexpected animal you've ever worked with? Like rabbits, dogs, horses, kind of expected. You, you've mentioned tiger, but. I did have a tiger once. I've had a baby giraffe. Um, I, um, 
trying to think. There's a lot of people. Uh, I did not have this in Mississippi, but I have a lot of rabbits. People love rabbits up here. Um, trying to think the craziest. I did have a duck last week, um, which um, you can a, a, a pet duck. Pet, because I had to duck. clarify, there are laws in place because you can eat ducks, um, and there are laws in place on what kind of drugs you can give said. Um, and um, that was pretty crazy, actually. That was that will probably be one of my craziest ones. Um, that whole incident, like the, it had a really bad parasitic infection, and we were going to give it um, very. Ex and I guess that what's that's what makes it like crazy. Um, we were going to give it um, the a drug we give to dogs when they have actual heartworms not the preventative but like actual heart worm um and it, it's it's pretty hazardous um that medication i mean m most dogs do fine but other species don't do well on that but we were going to do it um we had a paper that they did it in an eagle so we were like okay i guess um so we were going to do that and i had to like write a statement for the owners to make sure they wouldn't promise to not eat their duck because of this medication. Because it's not something humans can. Yeah, well, because, yeah, because the drug was very hazardous. Um, it had a, a, a arsenic component to it. And we were like, hey, um, make sure. Like, we knew they would never eat their duck. But we were just like, can you just, like, make sure? So that was pretty wild. That was really crazy. That, is, that sounds um, pretty wild. Um, okay, so I want to wrap this up with, if someone told you, like, when we're kind of focusing on our kids, if they want, wanted to grow up to be Dr. Mary, to do what you do, what advice would you give them? Um, I would definitely say, which was important for me going through school, is like stay um, the path. Like I had a lot of professors that like, I, my motto for life in doing what I do was Prozac for penguins. <laughs> and people thought I was crazy. Um, and I kind of stuck with it and eventually it, perspired to this wonderful thing. Um, and so I would say, like, even though I didn't really have professors that necessarily supported me, I would say try to find those people, seek out those people that are going to help you get to where you want to go if your school isn't giving that to you. Um, I think that's the most important thing. Um, because for me, I just like happen to run across the right people. Um, so I just think I was just lucky, but um, not, uh, everyone is. And um, so, yeah, I would just like, if you, this is really what you want to do, like stick to it. Um, don't let anyone else tell you differently or think it's crazy. So, yeah. Well, that's all. I think that's awesome advice outside of that pharmacy with kind of anything. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I really appreciate you taking the time today out of your busy schedule. Um, and I really appreciate you talking to us and hopefully you have a fantastic day helping animals. So yeah. thanks so much. No problem. Bye.